Madam Speaker, I now yield uh, four minutes to the gentlelady from Pennsylvania, Ms. Wild. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise as someone who, in my past life, defended corporations and entities that often had mandatory arbitration clauses in their contracts, and as such, I am uniquely qualified to address the myths that have been perpetuated about the FAIR Act. And by the way, myths is a polite term for lies. One has to consider that if we believe these claims, that forced arbitration is cheaper, fairer, and faster, then surely workers and consumers would voluntarily choose it. So there's no harm in restoring Americans' freedom to choose for themselves how to seek justice. First myth, the FAIR Act eliminates arbitration entirely and no one will choose arbitration if it's voluntary. Fact. The FAIR Act doesn't eliminate arbitration, has been said over and over here today. It just prohibits forced arbitration and allows both parties to choose arbitration voluntarily after a worker's rights or a consumer's rights have been violated. If forced arbitration were instead voluntary, the private market would incentivize arbitration providers to treat both parties fairly and equally so that both parties would choose that process because they would feel like they're getting an equal opportunity at justice. Second myth, consumers and workers are more likely to win and get higher awards and forced arbitration than in court. Fact, this is a lie. The re that is the result of a misleading study which deliberately cherry-picked data by excluding all results for the most common ways what comments, most common way consumers and workers file their cases in state courts and through class actions. The Chamber of Commerce only examined outcomes of individual cases filed in federal court because it knows that very few consumer and worker cases are filed in federal court. Americans are in fact more likely to be struck by lightning than they are to win a monetary award in a forced arbitration. A study based on self-reported data from two of the leading private arbitration providers revealed that on average, only approximately 382 consumers won a monetary award each year, less than the number of people struck by lightning every year in the United States. While an estimated 60 million workers are subject to forced arbitration clauses, only 82 prevailed in employment forced arbitration claims in 2020. Third myth, forced arbitration is faster and, as we've heard from some people across the aisle, cheaper than litigation. Another completely false claim based on faulty data from a forced arbitration database which systematically deleted older cases, completely skewing the average length of a case in forced arbitration. Simple data manipulation. And the idea that arbitration would provide consumers a cheaper way to litigate their claims, perhaps suggesting that they would do that without a lawyer, no major company will ever go to arbitration without their highly paid company lawyers, and every individual, whether they're in court or in arbitration, would need representation against a corporation regardless of the forum that they are in. <clears throat> Myth number four. The court system is overbooked, so forced arbitration provides more flexibility for scheduling. While more powerful defendants have an incentive to drag out resolution of a case, that incentive in exists whether they are in court or in arbitration. It is in the best interest of the individual who is filing the claim to seek the fastest possible resolution for his or her claim. And that would be done regardless of which they choose. So, and, and by the way, corporations often choose courts over arbitration to resolve disputes that they initiate, showing that they do so when it benefits them. Thank you. Myth number five, the FAIR Act violates the freedom to contract. This is my favorite one. Whose freedom? That of corporations or of Americans? There was a comment that we are in the most successful economy in the history of the world, but for whom? Not necessarily for consumers or workers. Don't Americans have the right to participate in the economy without being forced to forego the rights and protections that are afforded to them under the law? The United States Constitution's Seventh Amendment guarantees the right to trial by jury for every American. 
What if corporations inserted provisions into their contracts that forcing Americans to give up their First or Second Amendment rights to get or keep a job? Would we still be talking about the freedom to contract? And finally, the fat last myth that the FAIR Act is retroactive. It is not retroactive. It only applies to cases filed on or after the date of enactment. We need a level playing field between corporations and industries and the people who find themselves aggrieved by them. The arbitration process, make no mistake about it, is a private process. And people bringing their claims need to be able to fairly evaluate the best forum for that claim to be adjudicated. And with that, I yield back. Reserve. The gentleman reserves.